let's take a step back from all of the nvidia gpus and let's just focus on amd so here we are going to talk about all the gpus from vega up to the rx 7900 xdx and we will put them in a tier list so we can compare which is the best for price to performance when it comes to gaming but before we do that let me explain what the letters and numbers mean if you know that you can skip this part and go straight to the gpus for that look at the timestamps now the first two letters the rx and this is not important they all have that for every single gpu so it doesn't really matter and then we have numbers here let's talk about newer gpus that have four digits and the first number that's the generation so the newest generation right now is the seventh that means that if it's a six it's older five is older than that and of course if you guess that the older generation is vega then you are right it comes before the fifth okay so vega gpus have interesting names but i will not go into them because there are just four vega gpus in total for gaming and they are old so they will be ranked low because they are not worth it right now anyway older than vega gpus have three digits so the first number there means the generation but they are too old not worth considering so we are not going to talk about those unless you find them for really cheap in the used market but i don't recommend you buying used gpus more on that later on the video and after that we move on to the second number which is the tier basically the higher the better nine in the best eight a bit worse seven even worse and so on the third number is even simpler it can either be five or zero five is better than zero so if you see a five there that means that it's better than the zero variant and the last number it's even simpler it's a zero it's always zero that's it it's meaningless but you might have seen gpus that have xt after the numbers that means that it's better than the non-xt variant that is all about amd gpus there are m letters or mxt but those are for laptops which we are not going to cover today if you want me to cover them as well leave a comment and if you are interested i might do a video about those as well so without wasting even more of your time let's start with the older gpus moving towards the newer ones that leaves us with the vega series which you cannot even find new so it's a bit pointless but if somebody has offered you these cards and you are thinking of buying them just in case let's go over them really quickly so let's start with the vega 56 which is equal to the gtx 1070 the vega 64 it's a bit worse than 1080 but the water cooled version is as good as the gtx 1080 and the Radeon 7 which is equal in performance to the 2080 goes for around 700 dollars new so that is stupid and since they are hard to find and even when you find them they are not cheap FFT for all of them. Now the RX 5300 and 5300 XT both were really cheap and launched at around $130 but you cannot find them new and even if you do the 5300 only has 3 gigabytes of RAM and the RX 5300 XT comes with 4 so it's not enough for modern gaming. I would stay away from those cards even though they are cheap FFT for both of them. Now let's move on to the RX 5500 and 5500 XT. So the standard 5500 it's hard to find so we'll focus more on the xt version which can be found for under 120 dollars but you can get up to 8 gigabytes of ram with this gpu that version is a bit more expensive but a lot better it is a bit worse than the gtx 1660 but because it's really cheap i can see a place for it in the cheap builds for that reason c rank so the next gpus in line are the rx 5600 and the rx 5600 xt they have 6 GB of ram which is bad but the rx 5600 xt is about 20 percent better than the rx 5500 xt so it is a bit better than the rtx 2060 but it's priced at around 190 dollars so because it is a lot more expensive for now i think the tier should suffice and when we look at the rx 5700 and the rx 5700 xt well the non-xt variant is hard to find but the xt version is just a tiny bit worse than the rtx 2070 super it has 8 gigabytes of ram and it's just 10 dollars more than the rx 5600 xt so in my opinion even though it's old it's still at b tier just because of how cheap it is for the performance now things get a bit more interesting because we got just one generation below the current one and even though these gpus might not be as good as them they went down in price since they are the old generation and let's begin with the rx 6400 it only has 4 GB of ram so i don't like it but if you are more of a casual gamer and you don't want to spend a lot of money on your gpu it's equal to the gtx 1650 so i would say d tier just because it's cheap at around 130 dollars now the rx 6500 xt it only has 4 GB of ram but it is 20 percent faster than the rx 6400 for only 10 dollars more so c 
tier just because it is that much better and it is just a bit worse than the RTX 2060. Now the RX 6600 and the RX 6600 XT and the standard GPU goes for around $200, the XT variant goes around for $270, but it is 10 to 15% better than the non XT variant. They both have 8GB of RAM, so they massively outperform the RX 6500 XT. Now the RX 6600 is equal in performance to the RTX 2060 Super and the XT version is just a tiny bit better than the RTX 3060 so they both deserve the B spot but if you want an A spot worthy GPU go for the RX 6650 XT which is only 3 to 8% better than the RX 6600 XT but it goes on sale for around $240 which makes it cheaper than the RX 6600 XT so for that reason A tier and let's move on to the RX 6700 the RX 6700 XT and the RX 6750 XT. The RX 6700 is just 10 to 20% better than the RX 6650 XT. Now, prices start at $180 for the standard RX 6700. For the XT version, it's $320 and $340 for the RX 6750 XT. Now, the XT version is just another 10 to 20% better than the non XT version. And the RX 6750 XT is just another 4 to 7% better than the standard XT variant, depending on the game I mean. But where do we rank these? Well, I guess these GPUs, at least for me, deserve the S tier. And there is one reason for that, they are cheap, not as cheap as I would want them to be considering that they are the last generation, but good enough compared to the rest of the GPUs. They go on sale quite frequently and they are powerful. The standard RX 6700 is just a bit worse than the RTX 3060 Ti and it has more RAM and it's cheaper than it. And when we look at the RX 6700 XT, well, it is a bit worse than the RTX 3070, but if you want that 3070 performance, go for the RX. 6750 XT which is just a tiny bit better than the RTX 3070 but don't forget that the RTX 3070 only has 8 gigabytes of RAM and it's a bit more expensive so for those reasons yeah I think these cards deserve the S tier and the RX 6800 and the RX 6800 XT they are $430 for the standard and $500 for the XT variant now they have 16 gigabytes of RAM and the 6800 is 10 to 20% better than the RX 6750 XT so it's a bit worse than the RTX 3080. The same goes for the XT version. So it's 10 to 20% better than the non XT variant. And it is a bit better than the RTX 3080. Now, where do we rank this? Well, I think B tier. Now I know they are overpriced for the performance, but if you need 16 GB of RAM, they are a good deal. And finally, the RX 6900 XT, which comes at $580, and the RX 6950 XT, which is priced at $625. Why isn't there a non XT variant? Well, that is to confuse us and make these GPUs look faster. That's why AMD did that. That's the only reason that comes to my mind. Now, these GPUs are not worth it in my opinion. The 6900 XT is equal to the RTX 4070 and the RX 6950 XT is a bit better than the RTX 4070, but the price doesn't justify the performance. So for me, C tier. But if you want more performance, maybe this GPU is for you, but for me, it's not it. And the current generation, finally. Let's start with the RX 7600. It has 8GB of RAM. It is a bit better than the RTX 3060 and it's still a bit worse than the RTX 4060. It is priced at around $250 which is not expensive for a current generation GPU so for that reason it's easier. But things start to get a bit messy with the RX 7700 XT which you can get for around $450 and it has 12 GB of RAM so it is a bit better than the RTX 4060 Ti but still B tier just because it's a bit too expensive. Now the RX 7800 XT it is $500 and it has 16 GB of RAM and has performance equal to the RTX 4070 but still that's too expensive for anything above B tier. And the legendary RX 7900 XT you can find it for less than $800 it's a bit worse than the RTX 4080 
and it's 20 to 30 percent better than the RX 7800 XT but even that performance leap doesn't justify the price tag so for me C tier it's just too expensive and we have one more the RX 7900 XTX they gave us an X more to tell us that this is more powerful if you wanted a GPU with more access get this it sounds cooler but it has a tiny bit more performance compared to the RTX 4080 but comes at 940 dollars and it's just 12 to 15 percent better than the last cool variant that has an x less so c tier let's just keep them close to each other and now one other thing to consider before you buy these gpus is that nvidia still has better software it has better ray tracing it has dlss and even though these cards have fsr dlss is still superior keep that in mind and there are programs that lack or don't work properly with amd gpus even if those gpus are more powerful so check that look at what apps you use and check if they work properly with amd gpus i don't want to talk bad about amd but these are some really valid issues now the reason i didn't mention the used market well there is a really good reason for that they are not reliable i mean if you buy one from newegg or some other legit website they can be a bit better but sometimes they are abused sometimes they don't work properly and you might not figure that out until it's too late you never know how much more life a gpu has inside of it so most of the time it's not worth it now with that said if you know the buyer he might be a relative or a friend of course get it why not get the better deal but most of the time they are not worth the risk and with that said why are only those three gpus at s tier well the answer is simple they are good enough i mean they are good enough now and they will be good enough for the foreseeable future since they have 12 gigabytes of ram and since they have quite a bit of performance and the reason why they are cheaper is because they are the last generation so be careful you might find them for even cheaper and with that said if you think that the tier list should be done differently tell me what would you change in the comments down below and and if you have a question about anything relating computers, feel free to ask me. I reply to every single comment, so I will help you. And as always, if you found this video helpful or if you liked it, push the like button. If you want to see more videos like this or just more tech related videos, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And I will see you in the next one, I guess.